Hello, dear students. Today, we are going to start a super exciting lecture of your 12th standard, that is, sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Now, why should you study this chapter? According to our neat year-to-year -year paper analysis, we have seen that multiple questions has been asked from this chapter. So, dear students, stay focused and I promise that this chapter will be crystal clear to you. Before we dive into this chapter, let us walk through this beautiful garden. We see roses, lilies and sunflowers. And what are these? These are flowering plants. And can you tell me what the flowering plants are also called? The flowering plants are also called angiosperms. So, can I call this chapter as sexual reproduction in angiosperms? Yes, I can call this chapter as sexual reproduction in angiosperms. So, whenever we are using the word sexual reproduction in angiosperms, it involves four major steps. Sporogenesis, pollination, fertilization and embryogenesis. And in this course of chapter, we will be understanding each and every process in details. So, it is very essential for us to know about the sexual structure of the angiosperms. What is the sexual structure of angiosperms called? Yes, it is called a flower. So, right now, we need to discuss about the different parts of a flower. In front of us, we have a beautiful flower. At the bottom, there is a long thin part which is called the pedicel. With the help of this pedicel, the flower is attached to the stem. Slightly above the pedicel is the presence of this beautiful green leaf-like structures which is called the bracts. Above the bracts, there is the presence of a swollen knob-like structure which is called the thalamus. On this thalamus lies the four walls of the flower. That is the calyx, the corolla, the androecium and the gynoecium. The calyx and the corolla are called the non-essential walls of the flower. Whereas the androecium and the gynoecium are called the essential walls of the flower. Now, why do you think the calyx and the corolla is said to be the non-essential wall? Because they are not directly involved in sexual reproduction. On the other hand, the androecium and the gynoecium are directly involved in the process of sexual reproduction and that is why they are said to be the essential walls of the flower. So now, let us discuss about the non-essential walls of the flower. We will be starting with the outermost wall, that is the calyx. The units of calyx are called the sepals. In front of us, we have a flower bud. This flower bud is covered by some green structures. These green structures are the sepals. So the main function of the sepals is to protect the flower in the bud stage. Now, the sepals can be of two types, polysepalous or gamosepalous. In polysepalous condition, can you see that the sepals are not attached to one another? They are free. So when the sepals are free, that is called a polysepalous condition. And here in the gamosepalous condition, please observe that the sepals are attached to one another or I can say that the sepals are fused. And when the sepals are fused, such a condition is called gamosepalous condition. Moving on to the next wall of the flower, that is the corolla. The units of corolla are called the petals. Can you see this beautifully brightly colored structures of the flower? These are the petals. 
the petals helps in attracting the pollinators. Pollinators like the bees, birds, insects, everything. They are attracted because of this beautifully colored part. So, the main function of the petal is the sexual advertisement of the flower. Just like the calyx, the petals can be again of two types. Polypetalous condition and gamopetalous condition. In polypetalous condition, please observe that again the petals are not fused. They are free from one another. So, we call this as a polypetalous condition. And in case of gamopetalous condition, observe that the petals are fused with one another. So, it is called a gamopetalous condition.